wave hi to Ethan. That would be awesome. Amazing. Okay, now we're, we're all basically friends, so we can get started. Um, so my name is Colin Alzheimer. Some of you know me, uh, a lot of you don't. Um, uh, but I love pinball just like, like everyone else does here. Um, I started Kineticist in 2022, uh, and I'm really incredibly honored to be invited by Rob Burke and the whole team here uh, to have a chat with y'all today. So I want to say that um, Kineticist, for those of you who are fami familiar, it's a, it's a team effort. So it's something that, that I, I lead and I run, but I really couldn't do it without all of the contributors that we've had up here. I think we've had something like 15 different people help out with the site. So it's really a, a, a big team project um, and a ton of wonderful support from um, friends uh, and other mentors in, in the community. So I'm super appreciative of that. Okay, so the three P's of pinball. Uh, it might seem a little bit cryptic, a little bit weird, um, but if we flash back to this past July, uh, when I was tasked with coming up with the idea of this talk, I mostly did it from the hospital room where I am in, in that photo where Ethan would be born uh, just a few hours later. Uh, so while the origins of the talk uh, may come from a, a place of extreme sleep deprivation, uh, I, I think there's a kernel of truth that, that kind of speaks to what I think Kineticist is good at uh, and what I'd like it to be. So I spent most of my uh, college career as a film major uh, before moving into marketing to try to make some money. Um, and I still have a deep passion for film and storytelling uh, and I love evaluating things through the lens of story. Uh, some of my old agency colleagues were probably tired of me using, you know, the hero's journey uh, in all of our pitch decks. So here I'm doing that again. Uh, this is kind of your typical three-act story structure, and you'll see it em emulated in a lot of different places, uh, from movies to TV and, and all sorts of things. Uh, you kind of have your, your backstory here, your rising action, the inciting incident sort of kicks off the plot, all the way leading up to a climax in Act 3. So the next part of the, the presentation will, will sort of follow the structure a little bit. So starting with the exposition, uh, because every good story needs an excessive amount of context, at least in my world. <laughs> so before pinball, uh, I was kind of a, a suit-wearing marketing executive. You know, I wouldn't be wearing a, a T-shirt on, on stage here. Uh, working for agencies, Fortune 500 companies, um, uh, startups, um, some major political organizations, um, that kind of thing. So think of me more as like a, a trained marketer and a, a business guy who happens to really enjoy creating pinball content. Um, earlier in my career, uh, I ran a, a local happy hour and nightlife website called Five O'Clock Dallas with my lovely wife, Alyssa. Uh, we were kind of lumped into the citizen journalism movement at the time, which is like people without a, a trained journalism background reporting and creating content on, on sort of different scenes and cultures, uh, which enabled us to speak uh, at South by Southwest in Austin, which was great. Then we moved on to running an indie music blog, uh, mostly so that we could get into shows for free in our local scene, but, but it worked. I've, I mean, I've always been kind of a music nut, um, and it was a good excuse to um, get some practice creating content in that area and, and sort of getting more networked into that, that scene. So there's a little bit of a pattern here, uh, if you can see that with what we're doing with Kineticist. Uh, I would then eventually get into home brewing, but beer, not pinball. Um, wrote a craft beer review column um, and started working on plans to open up a brewery, which never quite materialized, uh, but that's probably for the best. All right, so now that the excessive backstory is over, um, we will get into the inciting incident for why pinball. Uh, and, and this is kind of a big deal for me because unlike a lot of people that I talk to, um, pinball, it, the draw for it has very little to do with childhood nostalgia, for, for me at least. Um, I, I pretty much barely remember getting a chance to play a lot of pinball growing up. Um, if I, I kind of scan my memories a little bit, uh, I remember being kind of captivated 
buy pinball machines when I'd come across them with the lights and the sounds and the whole kind of world under glass thing. Uh, but the few quarters that I'd have at my disposal, they never lasted really long because I never really understood how to play the game. Um, so I'd kind of gravitate to other types of games in an arcade where maybe my quarters would go further, or I, I could get some tickets for redemption, that kind of thing. But in 2017, uh, we actually took over ownership of a uh, machine, a 1979 Joker Poker, which I have right here, the EM version. Um, from my wife's father. So this is actually one that she grew up with in her basement. Uh, and that was the first time I'd really uh, been able to experience playing pinball regularly in a home environment and just got completely hooked. Um, after that, I would discover the New England Pinball League and the, and the great community there. Uh, and Pintastic as, as, as well. That was the, the first year we discovered that. And I, I would say my, my mind was just kind of blown um, and I was completely hooked. So now here's where I start to get really deep into the pinball hobby. So in 2019, I started organizing um, a bunch of tournaments with Joe Lemire, uh, if you know him, and his Pin Masters of New England group. Um, it, it, it was really interesting and kind of learning what it takes to put on a fun pinball tournament um, and, and sort of getting a better feel for you know, what, what makes the community tick um, and what kinds of things are important to them. Uh, and, and sort of seeing the, the room there was for kind of creative and fun work in pinball. Uh, I really wanted to help that series grow and get more established, but you know, life happens, I broke my leg, we had COVID, uh, so my involvement with pinball really kind of tailed off. Uh, I'd play in the occasional tournament when we could, stayed involved in the local league, but everything else <laughs> took just a bit of a pause. So as COVID started wrapping up, uh, kind of almost on a whim um, is when I started working on the bones of Kineticist. So it was sort of a callback to some of those other projects I had mentioned before, the Five O'Clock Dallas and the But I Just Like Music, um, where um, I really enjoyed doing that kind of work, building websites, creating content, and tying it back to some sort of hobby or interest that I had some passion for. Um, and you know, at the time, I was spending an inordinate amount of time watching pinball streams and tournaments and podcasts and playing pinball. So I figured, hey, if I'm spending all this time doing this anyway, why don't I try to like write about it or build something around it? So it started off um, as a WordPress blog called Game Room Dude, which is a terrible, terrible name, <laughs> and and I really didn't like it at the time. Uh, but it was a good way for me to just sort of get started and get practice in just sort of writing and creating content again. So later that year, I'd, I'd relaunch under the Kineticist name um, and start bringing in that, that sort of blog content background alongside uh, more robust data from the OPDB uh, and Pinball Map. The Pinball Map team is here. Uh, they're wonderful. They have a really awesome uh, API that you can tap into, and I started building with that, plus all the content, and sort of um, growing out what, what Kineticist was and, and could be. So at the same time, um, I started volunteering with the New England Pinball League, uh, just because it's important to me um, to try to give back to a community that had given me so much, and, and just try to it's a, it's, it's a volunteer organization like a lot of these things are. So anything I could do to sort of ensure that the league would stay, oh, stay around for a long time is, is, is kind of what I wanted to help out with. Um, and then I started uh, writing with This Week in Pinball, helping out with their regular updates. Uh, and here we are today. Kineticist really uh, continues to gain a lot of traction, probably a lot faster than uh, I intended at the time. Um, we're currently exceeding about 30,000 monthly website visitors, about 55,000 page views, and have an email list with 1,800 subscribers, and we're approaching 3,000 followers on social media. Um, so the, the, the growth has been spectacular, and the, the way that the community seems to have embraced um, what we're doing um, has been um, really wonderful to see. 
So I, I guess we'll call this kind of the, the midpoint of the story, uh, because truthfully, I, I don't know where it's going to end. But maybe speaking here today is the climax, which would be great. Um, hopefully it's not, but you never know. It could be. Um, So if, if, if we were to sort of take a look at all of that um, and, and kind of chart my, my own personal pinball path, it would look just a little bit something like this where you have, there's before pinball, there's the inciting incidents that got me into pinball, and then this like crazy pinball explosion just going deep down the rabbit hole of this wonderful hobby. And so I would say I, I kind of, that's kind of where I want Kineticist to live, right? Where I want to help generate more of those inciting incidents for people who may not be aware of w w the depth and vibrancy of the pinball hobby today, uh, where they can get introduced to it in a friendly, approachable way, and then start to go really deep with tutorials, learning about the games, learning about uh, the history, learning about the people, um, and everything that we um, try to represent on the site. So, all that said, we'll tie it back to the three P's of pinball, at least the way that I see it. I, it's, to me, it's kind of the, the holy trinity of the silver ball, right? You've got pinball and the games, that's kind of obvious, you, but then you have the people behind the games, the people behind the community, um, and the places that people go to play the games and socialize and congregate. I think you need sort of all those three things together to make pinball as interesting um, and vibrant as it, as it is. And we'll uh, talk you through a little bit how this kind of manifests on the site for those of you who aren't familiar with it. So for, for pinball, for the games, we've got a few different areas that we focus on. There's our hype index, uh, which tracks um, the sort of hype level for various potential pinball themes that could be out there. We have the games database leveraging the OPDB data and building on top of that. We have our, our games tutorial series, uh, which are a little more approachable than like, um, uh, like a tilt forums guide, if you're familiar with those, uh, but more in depth than, than something you'd find on a pin tips. Uh, and then uh, lists and guides, which, which we'll get into. We do a lot of those as well. So the hype index here is the sort of the, the first major feature that we built out on the site. Um, as a film kind of music pop culture nerd, uh, I, I love the, the kind of theme speculation that goes on in the hobby and the discussion that goes around that. Um, and I wanted to build something that could sort of track that to some degree um, and, and, and sort of make sense at you know, what, what people are interested in potentially playing or, or even buying uh, and, and really seeing if we could find any kind of pockets of interest for IPs that might speak to non-traditional or younger pinball audiences. Uh, plus, I would say just the, you know, the, the, the marketer in me is kind of fascinated uh, by this kind of market research uh, and, and how it might apply to the business side of pinball. So for, for this, we crawl uh, several popular pinball communities for discussions about pinball themes. Uh, and right now, we manually review all that content and, and sort of tag and log it in, in a custom database where it gets aggregated and reflected on the site. Uh, we've identified about 1,800 unique themes so far, uh, but we only surface about 250 of them on the site right now. Uh, currently, people can also, when they view the hype index, they can log their own personal hype level on a scale of like 0 to 100, um, just to introduce a, a little bit of a different ranking system on the site. So we also have a games database. Um, I, I see it as kind of a vector point for exploring the people who made the games uh, and how to play them, uh, and, and, and also giving people a path to explore some of the other great community content that's, that's already online that might be hard to find. Um, it's why where we can really try to make it a point to um, include videos and tutorials and, and links that other people are already producing, uh, rather than needing to necessarily reinvent the wheel on our own, which we will do sometimes if we think we can add our own spin to it, but that's not always um, the idea. 
Uh, the game tutorial series, uh, these are spearheaded by two of our contributors, Noah Crable and James McFadder. Uh, and it's one of my favorite things that we do. Uh, it gets really good response on the site. Uh, I'd say our goal with these is just to make the games a bit more approachable for new and casual players uh, and to present it in, in more of a text-based format uh, for easy scanning and future reference. Uh, I would say as great as some of the video tutorials out there can be, and you know, not everyone has the ability to dedicate that kind of time to sit through hours of, of a video or a, or a gameplay stream. Uh, and I, I think much like how everyone has a different learning style, uh, some people enjoy having different options when it comes to learning how to play a game, you know, just like any other life skill. And like I said before, I, I would say these tutorials, they, they live between like a full printed rule sheet or something on a tilt forums uh, and something that's more quick hit like a pin tips. Uh, and of course, as a, as a digital publication, we create a lot of lists and guides. Um, it's a format. It's, it's a lot of fun to write these. Um, and they do get strong engagement from the community when we publish them. Uh, and it, despite some of the, uh, I would say, sometimes negative reactions to a, a quote, clickbait tactic, <laughs> uh, we, we always do try to make sure that there's some, uh, there's some substance uh, behind what we create. Uh, and, you know, from my own experience in my career, it's a, it's a format and a structure, much like the three-act structure that we talked about before, that um, it works. And it works for a reason, and it's worked for a very long time. So we do those there. Uh, on the places side, we're mostly building on top of data from Pinball Map, uh, which is fantastic. And we introduce a few of our own wrinkles. Um, so for the locations database, we take some of the data from Pinball Map and we filter and transform it a bit for our purposes. Uh, so for example, we don't include locations that haven't been updated in a few years. We try to only include locations that have two or more games on site. Uh, we really want to try to drive people to quality locations that, that might cater more to a pinhead kind of audience and would be more likely to provide a positive pinball experience for a new player. Uh, typically, we, we see this being reflected in locations that, you know, have a handful of games on site uh, where their pinball map listing gets updated frequently uh, because that means pinball people are probably playing there. Um, and if they're playing there, it's probably a good venue, more than, more than likely. And then we use some of that data alongside our own research um, to create city guides for anyone looking for a, sort of a concise roundup of where they might be able to play some pinball, wherever they happen to be, traveling, whatnot. Uh, and again, the, the goal here is to drive people to quality locations um, that, you know, some of them may not always get the same kind of love and attention that, that they should. And this is one of my, my favorite things uh, that we do. We have a monthly series in collaboration with the Pinball Map team, um, just highlighting new uh, locations that have hit the Pinball Map database in the prior month, um, which I, I, I love this for a lot of reasons, but mostly because it helps give more attention to some of the small businesses that are jumping aboard the pinball train. And, and it's another thing that, that I think just showcases the vibrancy uh, of the community and how pinball can be a part of all sorts of businesses from your traditional bars and, and arcades, barcades uh, to like retail stores and, and concert venues. It's, it's really fun to see. And they're, they're quite funny too if you read through them. Uh, on the people side, uh, we're still kind of building this out, uh, but I think it's an incredibly important part of the pinball picture that sometimes gets overlooked. Uh, in the community alongside the, the more game-centric content. So we have our uh, Pinball People database, uh, which we've been building out, and today it covers just about every known person credited for building a pinball machine. Uh, I'm sure we're missing some people, but it's, it's pretty robust at this point in time. Uh, we then go through and we collect third-party uh, materials like podcasts and interviews and articles and videos and capture them in, in the database. 
This way, when someone wants to learn more about a particular game maker, they can easily find and engage with a lot of the great content that's already out there. So for example, this is a page for, for Brian Eddy. Uh, we have a little quick bio for him, uh, some key kind of career stats, like how long he's been active, how many games he's produced. Uh, and then we just link to public interviews, uh, the, or podcasts or videos that, that he's already done uh, so people can, can explore those some more. And we also do the occasional interview, uh, like what we did earlier this year, speaking with Bowen about his um, final resistance experience um, and, and some of the other kind of key beats from, from his career. Um, so we'll be doing more of those in the future. Uh, and then the community highlight uh, series I really like too, where there, there, there are stories about people in the community that might not have the stature of a Bowen, but are no less important. So like, for example, this is Drew Robichaud, if you're familiar with him, he broke the Guinness World Record for continuous pinball playing earlier this year. So we had a chance to have a conversation with him and he was a super interesting dude. Uh, and so, I mean, bottom, bottom line here, I, I love pinball games, uh, I love pinball people, I love pinball places, um, and just some parting thoughts uh, that I wanna sort of leave you all with, and then you can ask some questions if you like. Uh, but I've been asking a lot of people this question, uh, both in various pinball communities and, and pinball media outlets, and it's, what do you love most about pinball? Everyone has a little bit of a different answer, so I'm just gonna highlight a few here. Um, a game that requires the amount of focus pinball does means I can ignore my constant internal dialogue for a few minutes at a time. I feel that one all the time. <laughs> Uh, it quiets my neuro neurodivergent brain in ways nothing else really replicates. It hits the perfect spot of novel, physical, focus, and stimulation. That comes up a lot. That buzz you get when absolutely rocking it. Blasting that saucer and hitting ramps in AFM, or consistently nailing the ramp chair combo in Adam's family, I love it. Uh, I'm a huge fan of the feeling of consistent improvement. Pinball has so many little techniques uh, and game knowledge that you could hypothetically improve indefinitely as long as new tables are being made. Being able to slowly do better and better at my low stakes local tournaments is a fulfilling feeling. Gets me out of the house and meeting people. Most of the others at a pinball event will be my kind of nerd. Fully agree. Uh, it's tactile and visceral and I can share it with my kids. My 13 year old put up 1.1 billion on Infinity Quest recently and I couldn't have been prouder. Uh, the whole atmosphere of a games room, billiards, darts, music, buddies, beers, and some green. Uh, so I, I would say Kineticist, it's, it's, it's born from, from a love of pinball uh, and the people and places who make it possible. Uh, our goal is to showcase the vibrancy of the pinball community and foster welcoming and friendly, friendly community in the pinball hobby. Uh, and I'll leave you with the note that we're always looking for contributors uh, and collaborators. There's the website URL, there's my email address. You're more than welcome to reach out and we can, we can talk ideas. But uh, thank you for attending this, this has been wonderful. If you have any questions, let me know. That's, I mean, yeah, that's, that's a tough one. I, I, I much prefer open communities where everyone can participate. Um, it's, it's sort of why I love what like Pinball Math is doing, for example, where they've open sourced their, their code and allow people to contribute um, and, and use their data. Like I, I'm much more on that side of the fence. Um, but at the same time, you know, I understand that, that Stern has, they have different business priorities. Right, um, and I, I don't have the insight in terms of what those are to be able to answer that fully. Um, I noticed on your site that you put a lot of effort into your graphic design. Yeah. I'm just wondering, one, if you do that all yourself, and two, just you know, what you see as the the value of putting in all that work. Yeah. Sure. 
Yeah, uh, it's a great question. I, I do most of the, the graphic design work myself. Um, I, I, I find it to be, uh, it's a fun creative outlet mostly. Um, and I, I do want it, I, I want things to look good. I want things to, to feel fun uh, and like someone who cares kind of put it together because to me that's what the pinball community deserves. Uh, not yet, but I, I know some of them are looking at it. <laughs> Where was Labyrinth on the uh, Oh, man. Uh, somewhere under 100, like 75 to 100, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so Labyrinth and Elton John were sort of not very hyped, I guess, at least judging by what we look at for the hype index. Uh, so it's interesting seeing those manufacturers pick those themes. It's mostly what people want. There's definitely overlap with, with rumors because people discuss those things kind of hand in hand. Uh, but it's mostly people talking about, hey, here's my dream theme, and I'm trying to advocate for their dream theme over and over in, in various places. <laughs> back to the Future. I think it's like Back to the Future, Jaws, He-Man are the top three. Are they all licensed uh, themes for this hype index? Most of them. There's, there's some, we do record some original theme ideas, uh, but they don't get nearly as much momentum as the, as the licensed themes. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, I, 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 I've, there, there have been some weird ones in there. Like, I, I've, I've got a post in there about, like, the most degenerate themes that you'd ever see. Uh, and, yeah, there's some weird stuff. <laughs> Anyone else? Yep. Yeah. How do you balance that between free and open space for people to share their thoughts and feelings and have that kind of accessible? Yeah, that is an excellent question uh, and is a big reason why we don't really have a community on the site yet. Uh, because if we're going to put something like that on, I want to make sure that we have really strong uh, community moderation uh, practices in place so that we can keep it positive. Um, and friendly, um, and that just takes, from, from my experience and, and what I've researched, it just takes a ton of work and effort um, to keep those things running well. So we're just not quite there yet, but, but I'd love to, yeah. Yep. Ah, okay, uh, games that we own. We own uh, Deadpool, Joker Poker, World Cup Soccer, Aztec, uh, we've got a loner Congo, uh, and we did put a deposit down on Labyrinth, so we're excited for that one. <laughs> um, top three themes. So, uh, to be quite honest, Bowie, David Bowie, was a was a top theme for me. I'm a big fan. I never thought that would happen in pinball, so it was really exciting uh, to see to see that sort of like a Bowie adjacent theme uh, come to the market in Labyrinth. Um, other ones. I would love to see a Gorillas pin for a music pin, um, and let's. Just, uh, I would love to see like a boy band pin or like something like '90s. I, yeah, I don't know. I think that'd be fun. And think, yeah, and think or, or Backstreet Boys. Like, it, I just, I just think it'd be a lot of fun. I don't know. Yep. Yes. Yeah, not not come. Uh, one day we'll maybe try to buy that, but <laughs> I'm sure it's expensive. Uh, can you say more about uh, what social media you're on? I know tying into the cesspool question. Yeah, well, we're on we're on most of the major ones. So we're on Facebook, Instagram. We are on X. We don't use it that much. Um, we have profiles on TikTok. We don't really use that. Um, yeah, mostly the Facebook or the. Pinball community tends to congregate mostly on Facebook. So that's, that's where we spend most of our time. And do you have to uh, eliminate any negativity there? Uh, do I have to illuminate? Uh, I try not to. Sometimes the negativity finds me. <laughs> do you have to do it for all the social media? Nope. 
Nope. Uh, in fact, we've, we've worked with a lot of people who aren't pinball experts, and I love working with them because they just bring a completely different perspective um, to everything. Um, and I, I, I love learning more about kind of what makes a casual player tick and how they get deeper into the hobby. I do not have a booth, but I will be walking around the show floor if you want to come say hi. <laughs> Does everyone know what the OPDB is? Get one, two, it's the open pinball database, right? Uh, so think of it like a, an open sourced IPDB, for example, or pin side game listing, where they have pretty much every, every, every game in their database, uh, plus key details that you can access through an API, um, and it's community supported. So there are a lot of people who contribute game listings and photos and, and content that, that everyone can use, which is wonderful. Anyone else? Do you think the people have like a common question eventually? Is that I would like to, yeah, yeah. Um, okay. Once I can figure out the, the moderation part of it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Three-year vision. Three vision. Um, so I, I, I need to continue growing traffic to just sort of cash flow to, to, to break even. Uh, but then I want to introduce more sort of products and, and, and services that people could buy um, that the pinball community would be, be interested in. Very minor ads. We're, we're really focused just on, on sort of growing traffic, growing the brand, and sort of learning uh, what works and what doesn't. Yep. So uh, collectible action figures, for example. Uh, we have some, something like that in, in the works. Um, uh, I don't want to get too much into that right now. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's something, something a little more non-traditional than, than just selling like digital subs subscriptions, right? Uh, I, I want to add add more value than that to the community. Anyone else? Cool. Thank you so much for coming. It's been great.